On December 25th of 2021, we got to see this. The incredible launch of James Webb Space Telescope launching an incredible mission that's going to be studying earliest stars, ancient universe, and a lot of different mysteries of the universe for the next 20 years. The telescope that for the past few months has been getting ready to begin its official mission and essentially cooling down. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about some of the recent updates and discover what the James Webb Telescope has been up to, and more importantly, where it's actually headed starting this summer. What are the first observational missions, and what are we going to be learning about by the end of the year? But first, let's start with this. The recently released image, showcasing the quality of the image and the sharpness of four of the main instruments on the telescope. Which means that everything has been finally aligned and everything seems to be working just as expected. Every instrument is performing way better than the scientists expected and seem to be producing absolutely incredible images. And as you probably know, the telescope for the past three months was actually flying around this spot right there known as the L2, Lagrange 2 point, located approximately one and a half million kilometers from planet Earth. Now, back in March, approximately a couple of months ago, the mirrors were officially aligned and we actually got to see the beautiful evaluation image visible right here, with a random star selected simply because it was in the middle of nowhere and wasn't really particularly bright either. And though you might actually not see anything special about this image, and by the way, there's more about this in one of the videos in the description, what's super, super interesting about this is how many different galaxies there are behind the star. And this was just a preliminary image based on a very preliminary observation. So you can only imagine how many different galaxies we're going to be discovering once all of this is fully operational. Also one common question that a lot of people ask is in regards to the spikes you observe around the star. These are typical spikes visible depending on the shape of the mirror of the telescope. And in this case, it's the result of the hexagonal shape formed by the mirrors which are also kind of visible around other objects here as well and will be visible in future observations. But generally speaking, the scientists usually know how to extract them. So it's really only the problem here, simply because in comparison to everything else in this image, this star is really bright. Then just over a week ago from when I'm making this video, the agency announced that the combination of the sun shield you see here and the active cryo cooler you see here that's responsible for cooling down mid-infrared instrument or MIRI to approximately 6 to 7 Kelvin has officially succeeded and that the telescope was at its operational temperature, an extremely low temperature basically just a few degrees above absolute zero. Which of course meant that the mission could officially begin and that future observations were now possible. Also interestingly, around the same time, completely by accident, the ESA's Gaia telescope that's responsible for watching the motion of various objects around the universe and has been instrumental in creating a lot of very accurate three-dimensional maps of our galaxy, was actually able to spot the James Webb telescope and snap an image of it as a tiny star visible right there. And considering that the distance between them was approximately 1 million kilometers, that's quite impressive. But it's really this image right here that got most of the scientists super excited. Because in essence, it's showing us that everything is aligned and is working as intended, or even better than thought. Scientists were actually kind of surprised by the quality. And so by having all of the instruments at their required temperatures, and by having everything aligned, the telescope is technically ready to go. And right away, a lot of astronomers on Twitter started to actually compare this to some of the previous observations from other infrared telescopes, with this image by Andres Gaspar being really interesting, because it perfectly illustrates how far we've gone in just a couple of decades, from the Weiss telescope that was operational approximately a decade ago, to Spitzer telescope that was deactivated in 2020, to the now active MIRI instruments from James Webb Telescope, whose mirror size is roughly around 8 times larger than the Spitzer Telescope. Although, as you might learn in one of the future videos that might be on the channel sometime tomorrow actually, there is something else right between them that's unfortunately missing from this image. But not gonna spoil this for you yet, check out that video tomorrow. And also subscribe just for fun. But even if you look at this recent image from the James Webb Telescope, there seem to be galaxies pretty much everywhere. Except for the bright dots, every other dot you see is a galaxy somewhere out there. And every image from every instrument has a lot of different dots on them. Which already means that 
all of the future observations are going to be absolutely mind-blowing. There's actually a huge chance we might discover things about the early universe we never even anticipated. But naturally, because this is predominantly an infrared telescope, we're also going to be seeing a lot of detail from around our own galaxy that was previously not as good based on other telescopes. At the same time, we might actually even be able to answer a lot of questions about nearby stars and nearby exoplanets. But in terms of the alignment, everything is done. And so it looks like the telescope is ready to go. But as I was researching this, I also found out that apparently originally when the scientists were testing this on the ground, they actually had to test the mirrors slightly differently simply because they were being tested under gravity conditions. They had to anticipate that once the mirrors reach the Lagrange 2 point, they're going to be in zero gravity and might actually change their shape or even expand a little bit, which would then lead to a slightly different focal point and potentially slightly different deformation that might actually cause the mirrors to be not as effective. But because the scientists anticipated all of this, we instead get some of the most accurate images of the universe we've ever had. So from now on, only extremely minute changes to the mirrors are going to be done based on extremely minute changes as the telescope changes orientation. But obviously the telescope is not starting its mission yet, until the summertime. The next few steps are going to be based on every individual instrument and every individual team behind the instrument. The part known as the instrument commissioning. And one of the more riskier maneuvers here is going to actually require the telescope to move around. And by changing its orientation, the scientists really want to limit the amount of solar radiation hitting the observatory and hitting various instruments. That's of course to make sure that the temperature doesn't change too much and that everything stays relatively cool. And also every two days, the scientists are going to be checking on the orientation of every single mirror, making sure that nothing happened to them and making sure that everything still works. And of course, apply any corrections if necessary. But the most important part is going to start in the summer and is known as DDERS. Director's Discretionary Early Release Science Programs. This is approximately 460 hours of observation that was awarded to 13 different programs in order to kickstart the science program for James Webb. You can actually learn more about this in the description below, but in essence there are six main topics. We have galaxies and intergalactic medium, with four proposals visible right here, massive black holes and host galaxies, planets and planet formation, solar system, stellar physics, and stellar populations. And the main point here is to have these programs observe things really quickly and release all of their data and their conclusions as fast as possible, hopefully within approximately five months. With all of this then following other programs including Cycle 1, with quite a lot of topics already selected, and actually a lot more topics than in the first program, and certain teams already selected to have guaranteed time, observational time, on the telescope. And so before the end of 2022, there should be at least 13 different types of observational data and 13 different studies that are going to be hopefully discovering something really cool in the process. With all of this starting very, very soon. And all of this kickstarting the program that's going to last for approximately 20 years. And with so many different cool studies already proposed, I can only imagine that we're going to have so much to talk about for many, many years to come which means that you should probably subscribe and maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And maybe come back tomorrow to learn about that other telescope that I mentioned that is not as popular as James Webb, but was almost as cool. And also maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.